that we were consistently on the list of the 50 best restaurants in the world. But it was a hot dog that earned us the number one spot on that list. Or rather, the winning strategy that it gave birth to, unreasonable hospitality. The principle that guided us as we took ordinary transactions and turned them into extraordinary experiences. In early 2010, on a busier than normal lunch service, I was in the dining room helping out the servers when I found myself clearing appetizers from a table of four foodies on vacation to New York. And they were going to the airport to head back home after their meal. I overheard them talking. What an amazing trip. We've been to all the best restaurants. And they listed a bunch. Uh, per Se, Le Bernardin, Danielle, Momofuku, now 11 Madison Park. Then another person jumped in. Yeah, but the only thing we didn't get to try was a New York City hot dog. You know those moments in a cartoon where the animated light bulb goes off <laughs> over the character's head, signifying they're about to come up with a really good idea? If you'd been in the room with me that day, you would have seen one appear over mine. As calmly as I possibly could, I walked gracefully back into the kitchen, dropped off the plates, and then literally ran out the front door and down the block to the hot dog cart. I bought a hot dog and ran just as fast back into the kitchen. Now came the hard part, convincing the chef to serve it <laughs> in our fancy fine dining restaurant. Guys, he looked at me like I'd lost my mind. <laughs> Serving what New Yorkers call a dirty water dog in a fancy four-star restaurant, but I asked him to trust me. And I told him it was important to me. And eventually, he agreed to cut the hot dog up into four perfect pieces, adding a little swish of ketchup and a swish of mustard <laughs> onto each plate and finishing them with a canel of sauerkraut and a canel of relish. Then, before we served at the table their final savory course, which happened to be a honey lavender glazed Muscovy duck that had been dry aged for two weeks, utilizing a technique that had taken years to perfect, we brought them their hot dog. I introduced it. To make sure you don't go home with any culinary regrets, a New York City hot dog. Guys, they freaked out. <laughs> I'm not kidding. At that point in my career, I had served thousands of dishes and many, many, many thousands of dollars worth of food. And I can confidently say that no one had ever reacted to anything I served them better than they reacted to that hot dog. Each person said it was not only the highlight of their meal, but of their entire trip to New York. And they'd be telling the story for the rest of their lives. See, that hot dog changed the way I approach restaurants from that point forward. Because up until then, I had been so focused on excellence, on all the little details that go into making a meal great, that I somehow hadn't realized something really important. That in restaurants, our reason for being is to make people feel seen. It's to make them feel welcome. It's to give them a sense of belonging. See, in restaurants, the food, the service, the design, they're simply ingredients in the recipe of human connection. That is hospitality. And I realized if we could be unreasonable in our pursuit of that, we could give people the kind of experiences they would remember forever. It was only then that I realized I wasn't actually in the business of serving people dinner. I was in the business of serving them memories. That hot dog only cost $2, and the impact it had was priceless. It does not take a big budget to start infusing this into your culture, because remember, it's not the cost of the gesture that matters, it's how it makes people feel. Vayner Speakers.